Welcome to the second part of how to set up your VCM scanner. So I'm trying to make these videos in separate videos to try and explain everything. Uh, I love to give way too much information, which some people might like and some for some people might be a little bit time consuming. <laughs> anyway, we're going to head over to the second part. Let's get into the car and let's get started. Currently, my MPVI tool is plugged in. I've got my, my VCM scanner open. Uh, at this point, what you can do is, is you can actually turn your ignition on. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say connect to vehicle. So basically, as you guys can see, we are connecting, gathering vehicle information. It's quickly gonna go through all the sensors and all of those kind of things. So once this car turns black, basically the car next to it, uh, it means that we are connected. All right. So in this table over here, which is our channels, this is literally the the last um, the part one video where we basically just worked on these channels, the, uh, adding values and removing values and moving them up and down to make it more readable. So what we're gonna do is just for the sake to make sure everything's working, we're gonna start the car. I actually moved my seat back so I like tippy toe on my brake to start it up. <laughs> so right over here there's a start scanning value. We're just gonna start it and as you guys can see everything is working absolutely fine. Okay. So what I did was in the past I did actually play a little bit around it but I'll just go over it with you guys. So basically uh, this diagram over here just shows you basically how your car was doing since you started to log it. You can actually just take your like with me I've got uh, the, the keypad on the laptop you can just press on both sides and make it smaller. Like there you guys can see I'm making it smaller. I think if we hold in control or something I'm unsure. Let's see if we hold left click right click i'm unsure how to do it uh but there maybe with the mouse scroll button you can maybe zoom in and out as well so that if you do have like a lot of data just to squish it in a little bit so you can see wherever you want to see so anyway uh let's quickly really talk about the rpms we're going to start with this top one over here what we're going to do is we're going to right click we're going to go to chart layout so as you guys can see we basically have seven groups over here uh these seven groups actually means there are seven layers of uh, graph information you're looking for such as graph one two three four five six seven so there's seven of them all right so basically if you're over here you can go to plus this is going to add a group so remember there's a difference between a group and a value so by pressing this plus you actually open a group eight so we don't want another group so we're going to say remove the group and then this will be add a series so basically let's say you go over here you want to add a series you're just going to click over here and as you guys can see there says new series so you'll be able to put in all your info so what we're going to do is i think for the practice of this um for this video we're going to remove the boost areas so now basically we have RPM and speed. So RPM is obviously the, the RPMs of your car and the speed is how fast your car is actually traveling. So we can actually look here if we just drag this one up. We can see here our RPM basically when we started, uh, when our car was idling, it was 1199 RPMs and then our speed was zero because we were standing still. So you can actually like move it around and see all the info as we go. But anyway, so now we want to modify, so we're going to go back to charts. I want to see my boost as an example. So let's actually, let's actually go here to group four uh, and then let's go and remove all of these values. So we're going to remove, remove and remove and then remove. So under group four, this is going to be our turbo, uh, our turbo group. So what we're going to do is we're going to say add series. We're going to call this ACT for actual boost, just easier to identify it. We're then going to go here to click uh, to insert or change. So over here, you can actually just inside, you can actually just type in boost. It will actually go through everything and find boost for you. But let me quickly explain it to you. So we have got a few tables over here. <clears throat> so table one over here is specific parameters, which is just basically all the parameters you can think of. So going over to airflow over here, we got turbocharger and here we've got like a bunch of boost stuff and so forth. So, and then if you go to the generic one, let me actually go back. If you go to the generic sensors, this is the same as your uh, channel, 
your channel section where all, you, all your gen, uh, your sensors is for your car. It's not to say your sensors is not under specific parameters. There's just a lot of parameters. So because we know we want to search our boost, we're going to just type in there boost. And here we go under, here we go, boost. So it's airflow, manifold pressure boost. So here is our boost pressure. So we're just going to double click on it. And then we're going to say, no, I know what I'm doing. All right. So we can also say the amount of decibels. So we're basically just going to say uh, decimals, decibels, decimals. <laughs> so we're going to say it must be two decimals. So let's say it's one bar point. 40 or let's say 401 is just going to make it 40 and then also our unit of measurement i always know bar so i'm going to stick to bar all right so before we continue i'm actually going to leave a problem here we'll actually get back to it real soon so there we go we got our boost let's just quickly change this actual boost. i can't remember if i changed it or not maybe when i pressed on the maybe it just took the parameter name but anyway so we got that one we're going to make a new series we're going to select we're going to type in boost as well so basically now we're going to look for desired boost pressure. So this is basically telling you how much boost we basically want to see how much our car is boosting compared to how much the car is actually asking for just to make sure they're as close as possible. And then over here, we're going to say DEZ desired boost. Uh, we're also going to work in bar and then we're going to say two decimals. We can actually go to this. This actually do three decimals. It's fine. I mean, more information is better, right? There we go. So we can actually close that up. So as you guys can see here, we've got our actual boost and we've got our desired boost. So now basically, let's quickly go and start a car up. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to put my key here. All right, so we're starting that up. We're recording. Okay, so now that you guys can see, we actually added the actual boost and a desired boost. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to go around the block now. I'm actually going to go and open a previous log file. So we're going to click here on open log file. And right over here, we got first log, which is false. Remain, don't, don't mind the false. So this will be actually explained into another video uh, that I'm actually going to make. So I was trying something and it turned out not to be right. So I said false. So I thought maybe I, <clears throat> I made a math uh, calculation mistake but anyway so as you guys can see here our desired boost pressure at this moment was 0 0.47 let's actually just move it a little bit sideways so yeah here you guys can see the actual boost okay this was actually here's our ram for our rpms let's actually take it a little bit further let's say while we were building boost over here so you can see our desired boost was 1.767 and our actual boost was 1.73 so that basically means that our boost was very close. Our actual boost was very close to our desired boost. But now you guys can see there's a problem here. Where the heck is everything over here? <laughs> I mean, like you can't see squad there. So what we're going to do is like there's no graph here. The lowest parameters, the average is zero. The highest is zero. The lowest is zero. We can't see any information of the boost there. That's why I actually left something to make a mistake to show you guys. So we're going to go back over here. We're going to go back to our actual boost. And and right over here, our limits. So our maximum limit, let's say 2.5. And our minimum limit we can keep as, as 0. We can actually even say minus 0 0.5 because sometimes there is vacuum. So let's actually say minus 0 0.5. All right. So what we do to the one, we must do to the other one. 2.5. Minus 0 0.5. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to close this up. And as you guys can see, there is our boost log. So now it just uh, shows up so perfectly. I just want to see how many our desired, our boost there. Okay. Anyway, so I don't even think we have to. Oops. What did I do? Let's zoom out. One in. There we go. So um, basically, as we all follow the, the red line of a year, this was basically, I basically put my foot down over here as you guys can see tps throttle position sensor so basically here at 1800 rpms i put my foot down uh in this car if i if my foot is fully down it is basically 86.9 percent uh and then as you guys can see as soon as we put our foot down we were requesting 1.19 bar of boost so please do not get mistaken 
This is not 1.9 bar. This is literally including atmospheric pressure, which is where is it? Let me quickly have a look. I know. Oh yeah, this thing is this thing is not in now. Oh, it's because basically when I logged this file, I logged it of the other values and parameters and stuff. So I don't think it is here. And I can't add the channel now. It's fine. It's fine though. But if I'm not mistaken, our atmospheric pressure is one bar as is uh, where we are. So basically, uh, if our atmospheric pressure is one bar, we take one away. So we're actually requesting here for 937, uh, 0 0.937 bar. So we're not even requesting for a bar over here. If we go up a little bit, as soon as it hits two bar, this desired value, then we know you're ask, we're asking for one bar. The car is not even asking for one bar. But if we do come over here, you guys can actually see if I zoom in here, there's a little bit of a, a separation over here where the actual boost is this one coming up is the actual. This yellow one over here is the uh, what is the desired boost. You can actually see we did go up a bit and then the car uh, kind of like rectified it. So if we go over here, we can see our desired boost is 0 0.917. We went to 1.09 bar. So we did kind of over spike the uh, boost over there. I think it's basically because I removed my cat. So we don't have that obstruction of the cat in the way. So the the car just boosts up a little bit quicker. Uh, so anyway, there we can see our desired boost and our actual boost. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to go right click, say charts layout. Um, you're going to go to the one you want and you're just basically going to go bonkers. You're going to add all the kind of things you want to add and all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to spend some time to do mine and then we'll then afterwards I'll show you guys what exactly it is that I've done. Okay, and we are back. So I just want to let you guys know uh, everything here in a chart versus time area. I'm not so happy with everything there. Uh, there is more stuff I would have loved to be there. Uh, but I think what happens is basically whenever you, let's say you data log your car, you guys see all of these values here on the left hand side. Do note that all of these values is basically me just adding a bunch of things back then when I was just new, just adding everything, going for like a data log section, just to trying to see how it is, work from it and improve it and all of that. So do not worry about these channel section. But what I do want to add is, is I've got a feeling that anything of your chart versus time, if it's not in your channels, you can basically not data log it. I think I did mention it earlier. Uh, that is my suspicion going here because there is a few extra things I wanted to add, such as my Lambda and my intake air temp, the ambient air temp and all of those kind of things. But it just give me like a blanked off block. So I think if I am done with it now, because basically what I can do is to show you guys, I can quickly close the log and then all the values over here in this channel is back to where it was in part one video. Uh, only when I go and say open a log, when I go to my first log, it puts it in the format that originally it was took in. So which is just a disaster over there. So anyway, but let's never mind that. This is basically us just focusing on a chart versus time. So I think once you've sorted out your channel and you go do a data log then, then uh, you'll actually be able to get more things for your chart versus time. Okay, so let's quickly have a look here. In the, this is what I've done. Once again, there's no right, there's no wrong. Uh, this is basically the things that you're interest, interested to know of your car and it will be displayed here. So basically we've got our RPMs and speed over here. So here you guys can see as the red increased, which is our RPMs uh, up until over here, which is 6882, we reach a speed of 129 kilometers per hour. What I want to tell you guys is you see how close this red line comes to 7,000, like till the top, which is over there, the max is 7,000. You can actually go and change it. If you right click, you go to charts and layout, you go to RPM, like I showed you guys, we can actually take this up. Let's make it. 8,000. Okay, so you guys will see the red chart will actually drop a little bit over there. So now it's actually running so friggin' on the green line. Uh, and then also, that is, you see, the green line was originally in miles per hour, which was over there. I moved it to kilometers per hour. Let's make it 250. Not that I'm gonna reach 250, but it's just to give some separation from the red and the green so I can see it easier. Okay, then we've got our mass airflow sensor over here, as you guys can see, as I started to accelerate, if you guys look at the red curve here, as I accelerated, it got more air in and in and in until over here, when I let off, it basically dropped down. So I wanted to add the 
intake air temps here and the ambient air temps here but for whatever reason i think it's because i never logged it maybe every year it yeah it's just not there then also for the next one we've got our knock on all four our cylinders as you guys can see right over here we've it went a little bit bonkers so we've got some knock i just want to show you guys quickly i'm going to make a video upon this as well i know why cylinder one three and four is knocking it will be in a future video anyway look at cylinder number two while you look at cylinder number two there's zero knock but you'll see knock on one two and three let's quickly go slowly cylinder number three is knocking cylinder number one cylinder number four and cylinder number two literally let's just go past it again does not have any knock so i finally figured out what it might be anyway then we've got our boost so the yellow is our desired boost also you can change your color if you go back here to the charts layout um, let's go to our actual boost you can click here on color and you can change it to any color that you desire so basically you can see here our light blue was staying on our yellow which is good this is our manifold absolute pressure sensor so basically here we were asking for 2.1 bar so which is one bar is atmospheric so we actually i was incorrect we were actually asking for 1.2 bar let's see we were basically asking for 1.2 bar so the car is boosting 1.2 bar and then yeah that is basically the pressure inside of your manifold absolute pressure uh manifold yeah the sensor in your manifold oh sorry i saw it just went so dark there okay anyway going over to our long-term field trims and our short-term field trims uh basically a lot of people say as long as it's in five percent it's fine so as you guys can see here at idle uh it's actually not at five it's a little bit higher which means that it has to add fuel so the uh, what do you call it the table might be a little bit lean but anyway uh going all the way no the table might be lean and now it's trying to get it a bit richer so going over here you guys can see with the full throttle starting from here basically we did pull some kind of fuel out but it's not a lot as long as it's in a five percent ratio it is good and when we let off throttle uh, the long terms actually did pick up a little bit but anyway uh, so one thing I wanted to add here as well was my lambda my requested and actual lambda but for some reason it's just not popping up so I'll try to figure that out in a part in the, in the future so yeah I wanted to add it here as well and just see how it does and also I think why it's actually taking some fuel out uh, I think it's because I switched from my stock air filter to my cone air filter so it doesn't suck in so much air so it actually has to lower the fuel a little bit to compensate the amount of less air that's coming in if it makes any sense and then yeah so over here it's something pretty cool look at this wheel horsepower and engine horsepower so on this pool this is not 100 percent accurate i'll make a video on this as well don't worry and i'll i'll go through the deepest depths as like i struggled for maybe two days with this thing so to get and then i'll tell you guys all the ins and outs and what i've done and why i've done it and all of that so basically on this pool so let's see we're going here to the back 210 horsepower over here okay so on the engine we had 210 horsepower on the wheels we had 158 horsepower that was our highest horsepower it looks like even here it's the same yeah so this was our highest horsepower 158 horsepower on the wheels my car is slow eh? it's slow as heck Anyway, then if we go to our torque, as you guys can see, our torque kind of like ramped up here to 384. But once again, if you actually look at it, look at our turbo log over here. You can actually see right over there, our request, our desire, and our actual is not the same. We're about 0.1 bar over. Once again, I think it's because we removed the downpipe. So it just boosts up that a little bit quicker. And then also, if you do look here, do you see this green? which is our TPS, Throttle Position Sensor, it actually dropped. So uh, in this car, 88.2 is 100% foot down. And then as soon as you draw, as soon as the car over boosts a bit, the intake, sorry, the throttle body just closed a little bit so that uh, not so much air can go through to control the boost. So it dropped to 51%. So basically, as soon as the boost kicks in, my throttle body is closing halfway and then it's opening again all the way there just to control this over boost spike a little bit and then also that gave us the spike here in our torque anyway guys we're gonna drop this video right over here i do hope i was a massive help i do hope you guys found it useful entertaining informative educational boring 
awesome i don't i don't know all of these kind of things <laughs> anyway guys thank you so much for watching if you have any questions let me know in the comments below uh the next video we'll most probably going to start talking about this these gauges over here maybe we could do the gauges and the graph in one video uh, and see how it goes i mean i mean i think we should be able to because those are very quick topics i think these two are the most difficult ones and then these ones are basically just in terms showing you a few things differently but anyway guys thank you so much for watching i'll see all of you legends in my next video but for now peace out